Hi, my name's Starsky and welcome to From The Studio on Clubbing TV. In this episode, we're going to take a look at a really small little synthesizer and that's the Elmira 2 from Neutral Lamps. <laughs> This is a bit of an odd synth really. It comes in this little box, but it is Yora Rack compatible. You can take out these four screws and you can plug it into your Rack enclosure. On the back, we've got this little USB-C connector and you can't use this box as a Yora Rack box if you've got other bits and bobs. You can't just take 42 HP stuff and stick it in here. It doesn't work that way. But as a self-contained little unit, it's a nice little thing. And what is it? Well, we've got four oscillators, one, two, three, and four, and I'll play it all in a minute, show you what it all does. But we've got a delay circuit here, a filter there. It's a multi-mode filter. It's got bandpass, high pass, low pass, and all sorts of mixtures in there. Then we've got the oddly named ouch circuit. I say oddly named, once you hear it, you'll understand why it's called ouch. And this has got two little parameters here, choke and bite, and these are used to just completely destroy a sound. And this is the analog part of it. The rest of it's digital. And it comes with four of these little circuits. If I turn it over, they've all got a sort of a random selection, it appears to be, of resistors, transistors, and capacitors or something. And each of these slightly changes the sound in a different way, but you can stick into these little holes in here if you know what you're doing or if you've got spare resistors or transistors or capacitors or whatever it is that you can stick in there. You can just plug things directly in there just to mess with the sound a little bit more. So these just pop in here. And I quite like that, a bit of DIY, a bit of circuit bending for anyone who's into electronics. I don't think I've got any resistors or transistors or bits and bobs lying around anyway, but bit of fun if that's what you're into. Anyway, let's plug it in and see what it sounds like. So we use the USB-C to power it, and then this is the audio out. And as I say, we've got these four voices, and if I play them, Instantly getting all that fuzzy, grainy, weird, gritty stuff that this is brilliant at. And I'll just quickly run through what it's all doing here. Let's turn the delay off and the cut off to the maximum. So, got a little envelope here. That's as fast as it goes, and this is as slow as it goes. And that goes on for quite some time, so I'll turn it down. Uh, then we've got these two knobs here. Um, this is a wavetable synth, so we've got different wavetables in it. And we modulate through those wavetables using this knob here. And this knob here does different things depending on what mode we're in. We've got 10 different modes on this. So let's get back to that red one. There we go. So this is detuning, so it makes it sound like two oscillators. Start detuning it with this. Let's add a bit of delay just to make things a bit, a bit crazier. <laughs> And then we've got, as I say, lots of different modes. This one's chords. Let's turn that off again. So as we twist this knob here, we change the chord. Then we've got bit crushers. We've got different filters in there as well. That's changing bits. This is a, a sample rate reducer. Let's get all sorts of crunchy, real lo-fi things from that, and this adds noise. So they're the basic ways it makes sound.
So this is the tuning of each of those voices. And if we want to quantize that tune in, we press this button here. And now these will all be in tune with the piano keyboard. It's just great. All these little crunchy noises are fantastic, aren't they? So that's sort of how it works. As I say, this is the delay, this is the filter, and this is the distortion circuit. So let's just play a little bit with that distortion so you can hear what's going on. So... As we bring in this bite, it just completely destroys the tone. And if we change these, they just change it ever so slightly, do different things. So as I say, complete sonic destruction. But we're not restricted to using these to control it. I've been using the Keystep Pro from Artoria, and just to show you how that works, if I put the pitch and the gate in from Oscillator 1, and now this should be playing Oscillator 1. And it is. It's almost like no matter what you do with this, it sounds fabulous, doesn't it? Really dirty and nasty. Here's a little demo I made then using the arpeggiator on the key step and then using a couple of the keys um, with the drum outputs to trigger the other oscillators. And those other oscillators are at a fixed pitch, so you got three notes to play as a melody. But it just means that you can do more than stand the sort of weird drones with it. There's an awful lot going on in here that you can't see on the surface actually. We've got a menu system in here that you access using the mode button and these little PG buttons. So these buttons that are used to change the wavetables are also used to select various menu items. So we've got different filters for example. So if we we'll go to 333, three, three, this should be a bandpass filter. And it is, 331 is like a ladder filter. And that's different. We can go to Oberheim style. This is a 12 dB. Not as resonant. Let's turn that bite off for now. So compare that with... See different things happening in there. And something I'd really like to do is change the signal default routing. The default signal routing goes through the filter and then to the delay. But if we hit mode and do one three four it's now going from the delay into the filter which means you can filter the delay output mentioned them yet but you've got a couple of LFOs in here uh, in that menu system you can sync the LFOs to the clock time the clock time can be synced to whatever's coming out of say your Keystep Pro so at any demos where I'm using a rhythm and I've got a cable going into there I'm clocking the whole thing to either the door or the Keystep Pro
Yeah, so there you have it, the Almera 2. I really like this thing. It's got a real character to it. It's not like any normal synth you're gonna come across, but it's those weird textures and dirty sort of horrible bases and weird sort of ambient things you can get out of it that I really like. It's just something that would take a lot of time to try and create with other tools and they just pop out of this. Yeah, it's no good for doing a straight up baseline or a lovely chilled out pad perhaps, but for all that lo-fi, grungy, dirty grittiness of those ambient tracks or for just taking some of the weirder stuff that comes out of it and using them for effects, it's absolutely brilliant. It's not cheap, it's about 500 pound. Um, so it's not gonna be your first synth, but if you are into your bits of kit and you've got a bit of a modular setup, or maybe you're thinking of getting into modular because you don't need to have a modular kit to use this, obviously, it's well worth taking a look. But I just thought I'd show it really for interest sake, because it's interesting. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. And if you did, don't forget you can catch it whenever you like on our Clubbing TV official YouTube channel on the From The Studio playlist. And if you've got any questions, drop me in the comments and I'll see what I can do to answer them. And also, if you are into your synths, your drum machines and your studio tech, do take a look at my Starsky Car YouTube channel as well, where I've got a bit more of a deeper dive into this. Anyway, I'll see you in the next episode of From The Studio.